Okay, now you heard Dr. Rabston drill me with a few questions. Now it goes on this episode for me to ask the rest of my questions and to hear his very, very smart and informative answers and ideas. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Pocatello Business Podcast with your friend, host, all-around great guy, and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. I've known you know Derek here for years now, and there's not a better man you'd want to come sit down and sit across from. You can see how you know just calm and collective he is, and he's such a a nice and, and gentle person to talk to. So if you if you need some assistance in this area, he's he's the guy you need to be talking to. So, well, you know, I think Spencer, I think I, you know, look, it's like a, a love fest here. I think the world of you. What a great guy, um, and and you've been helpful. And when I was looking for the building I'm in now, but you were part of that that process <clears> that helped me. Um, but, you know, um, you know, you'd say, well, what's a regret? And I say the regret is that, that those patients and those families that I didn't meet their expectations, right? Sure. I mean, you know, maybe it's like you look like a sports analogy, right? You know, you feel good about maybe winning a championship or a big game or something, but I think you learn more and I have learned more from those cases didn't go well and they didn't walk away thinking, I was very caring, understanding, or and uh, um, you know, and I guess anybody, anybody in general, but certainly for physicians, you're going to second, at least I do. I second guess myself and go back and say, "Hey, what was my role in this?" Right? Sure. Um, so, um, folks are coming here hoping to get benefit, and sometimes I I can't. So I'm trying to get better at identifying. I'm not sure I'm the best fit. I'm not sure maybe somebody else in my practice or maybe there's another office or clinic in town that will best sure. help you but but always looking for a good fit right oh yeah <clears throat> glad you brought that up too because really i think that's with everyone you know not every client is going to be perfect for your company you know it's it is that it is that fit and uh in in different circumstances like i i call my core our core values in our company if we if we can have those align up with our client and and company, that just makes everything easier and better. You're you're in a circumstance that, you know, I think a lot that comes in play as well, but also yeah. more into you know, exa- you know, I'm not I'm not a psychiatrist, but there's I'm sure there are other uh, things at play there as well. So, yeah, well, perfect. Perfect. Um, well, let's switch into the business side again. What's what's one of the mistakes you've made in in business? How have you learned from it? Oh wow. Um, mistakes. Uh, it's not that I haven't made mistakes. It's like how would I say? Uh, what's the biggest mistake? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to phrase it as a, as a lesson. One is okay. how important my administrative staff, I, I knew it was important, but I think the mistakes is I didn't know enough to know who I should be looking for. I didn't know enough the, to how to work and develop um, staff. Um, and I've had, I've had great employees over the years. Um, and I'm so grateful that anyone who's who's worked and helped our office. But I think that's probably the biggest biggest mistake if I go back and what I know about being a boss or an owner. And um, so I think that would probably be the, uh, because it's it's all about the people and mm-hmm. getting the right people and knowing, um, uh, you know, who's sitting in front of you and or am I really setting them up to be able to grow in this or or this, you know, it's going to be awkward for them and awkward for the company, for our office, because it's really not a good fit. But, you know, sure. sometimes we just see what we want to see, right? Mm-hmm. In, in people. And, uh, but boy, you're grateful when you, when you have people, you do it right. <laughs> and they grow and they get fulfilled and they, and they turn into just great assets. 
Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm currently in a, a, a continuing my education conference and, and I had a bunch of people just starting their journey and uh, talking to me about, you know, how do you, how do you do this? How do you get your employee handbook set up? How do you, all the stuff that I already have set up, they know I have set up. They asked me all this kind of things. And I said, you know, I have all that set up, but it really comes down to, and, and, and people don't want to hear it, but it comes down to hiring the right person. Because if you hire the right person or people or team, they're going to make your life easier. They're going to uh, read the manuals. They're going to, you know, you're not going to have to explain things line by line. You know, they're just going to run with it because they, they get you. You know, our, you know, our core values are be honest, have fun, make money and, and uh, work together. And people that share those core values and we write our hiring ads towards that type of person to attract that type of person, they come in laughing because we, we joke around on our hiring ad. It's not like any other hiring ad. And uh, it's so fun to find that match because it's so easy to train those people because they get it, you know. And the people that fake it, they like you said, sometimes they don't last very long because you feel like you're, you're literally like putting a round peg into a square hole. So... Yeah, that's why I always tell people, I'm like, you know, you can have all that stuff set up, but you don't have the right people at the helm. None of that stuff matters. So, yeah, very true. Well, and everybody's got their skill set, but, you know, <clears throat> and no, no offense, Spencer, but I probably wouldn't put you at my my tail back. Right. Or my no, my wide no. receiver. Right. On the football field. <laughs> no. I mean, I yeah. mean, you may be able to catch the ball. You may be able to. But. But you want to put people in the, that position that sure. really, you know, they're, they're best suited to for, for them as well as for, you know, your company. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So, and we're, and we're, you and I are hiring completely different type of people for sure. So, okay. Well, what would be the biggest advice, uh, best piece of advice uh, for our audience uh, based upon your experience in business? Um, you know, I think you really want to understand where, where you want to go. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve? What do you want for your practice? What do you want your practice to look like? Um, and, and for me, I think that's when I, I left um, residency. I just was kind of burnt out, <laughs> ready to be out of the demands of of, of the, the training arena and actually just, you know, start drawing a paycheck and, and have a life. Yeah. So it took some time to sort of figure out um, where my passion lay and in, in, in terms of, and the setting, um, and then to figure out, okay, am I really gonna be able to find that? And I, I looked around, but was I really gonna be able to find that? <laughs> Excuse me, working for, for somebody else? Um, or would I start to build something, the hospital or the whatever, you get a new director or, you know, in the state, there's new directives or shifts and then things change. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think for, I, you know, I don't know, I think private practice has ruined me. I, I don't know how I'd quote, <laughs> go to work for somebody else just because I'm so used to everything that goes into Ultimately, if there's a problem, blame me, right? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, that's not, doesn't, does it saying that? I mean, it's true, right? Yeah. I mean, I've had my hand in, in everything. Um, so, but, you know, I, I'm not expecting perfection. I'm just trying to get better each day. But I think you really want to know what it is you want for your practice, right? Okay. And, and, and what you want to deliver and how you, and then, and then stay with it, right? Like you were sure. saying, you, know, you, you just have to stay with it and adapt and be flexible and, uh, um, and hopefully find those people, right? That are really help you succeed. And hopefully they'll, they'll buy into the, the vision that you're trying to create and refine it and improve it. I agree, I agree. I'll tell you right now that that's just a sign of a, a true leader too, is that, Hey, when it's, when things go wrong, it's, it's on me. When things go right, you guys, you, mm -hmm. you admin staff, you guys that are on the team, you guys are the ones doing it. So that's a yeah. huge sign of, 
being a good leader there. And I like what you said too, like what, you know, what do you want for your practice? How do you want, how do you see it? But, you know, so for me too, and as people are trying to grow their companies, I also think what kind of life do you want to have? Because if you're trying to have massive growth within a certain period of time, your, your life isn't going to be as good family life wise, because you're going to be in growth mode. But if you can find that medium of, Hey, I can grow and still have a life and have time with my kids and have that balance. That's, that's great. Yeah. And I'd say that my associates, um, have a nurse practitioner, P two, two PAs and, uh, a psychologist and a, a licensed professional counselor. So that's one of the, the biggest things is I wanted them to have what, what I was looking for autonomy. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, look within the framework of our larger vision of what we do here you're going to be able to do what and, and learn and grow and, and and bring that to together so that we can sort of have diversity but still some sort of way to kind of blend it together um and the other thing is you'll be able to set your schedule right yeah if you know That's nice you know fridays or if you have to flex because of your kids or family or whatever um then do it right <laughs> yeah that is that is freedom that is that that part is super nice of being a business owner so well and i think it prevents burnout for them right for the clinician yeah. you know if you're the system's oppressing you and maybe you know i think i've I agree. made good on that promise to try and help my associates really sort of um come in grow learn but have the flexibility so that they can find that balance you're talking about between work and, and family life. That's perfect. That's perfect. Well, I'm going to switch gears a little bit because we're moving into the lightning round, last little bit of, the, the, of our podcast here. But I have to also throw out a sponsorship because our lightning round is sponsored by Dale's Outdoor Advertising. Uh, these guys have been pro providing for over 60 years, billboard uh, advertising efforts uh, digital and traditional in Pocatello area and a little bit in the Blackfoot. And if you guys want a great deal, call Rob today, Google him, call him. If you mentioned you saw us on the podcast or heard us on the podcast, he'll give you your first month for free or your installation for free when you sign up for a three month deal. So going on to the lightning round, uh, Derek, what was, if you had to say, what was one of the best books you've read uh, for business or, or maybe it can be a book or maybe it's a tool or a software that you've kind of found that's like a hidden gem within for business. Uh, what would you say that would be? Oh, you know, it was, oh boy. You know, it's great that you bring that up because I, I just crank through um, audiobooks and mm -hmm. uh, rarely do I do any fiction and they're almost all nonfiction or, um, and, uh, Ooh, but business, I think Clayton Christensen's, um, was it The Innovator's Dilemma? He, had, he did it several of them. I, I forget the titles, but um, The Entrepreneur's Dilemma, Innovator's Dilemma, anyway. Um, that was really, um, I, I think, made the point, you really got to be innovative. I mean, you, if you focus so much on your bread and butter and, and, and don't pay attention to the emerging trends, Right, you know, um, and you look at our businesses that were, they've sort of left town or no longer here. It, mm -hmm. It's not that these companies were not well managed, but the change in um, um, in the environment, you really have to pay attention to that and adjust accordingly. So, um, anything by Clayton Christensen. Like there's there's several books. It's been a while since, but I you know ten years ago when I was for 15 sure. years ago when I was moving towards business, his books were really helpful. I like it. I have to tell you, I don't know if you've read it, but I think it would appeal to you as well. But I loved it because it's a business book, but it's also very entertaining. Have you read, have you read Shoe Dog by Phil Knight? Oh, oh fantastic. fantastic. Isn't that amazing? I love yeah. that book. Uh, it is. That's, that's a great read. Yeah. That's a great read. Perfect. Okay uh okay next next question here what's the biggest myth business owners need to know the truth about if you if you couldn't pick one 
Hmm. Oh, biggest myth. Um, you know, I don't know enough. To, you know, I was just driven like, hey, uh, you know, to pursue that. But I, but I think one of the myth is is that, um, you know, it's it's miserable. Um, you know, running your own business, and you'll never have time, and you'll never be able to, you know, vacation or, and and, and to be sure, I mean, there, there's an extra layer of, um, um, there's a ton of responsibility that comes. It's not you just can't just walk away at the end of the day and say, well, that's somebody else's problem. Um, but I, I, you know, I I don't see it as a as a as a huge stress. Um, if, I think you got to go about the right way understand what you want and and stay at it um, and find the people and keep boy whatever you do to drive inspiration but keep looking for those people that that can really help you and um join in your vision i love that that's that that's a that's you know like that is a psychiatrist answer right there like you have mastered <laughs> more than other people have mastered of how to visualize and to think about things and to have things more in a, in a positive nature. Because if you, I, there's plenty of business owners out there that, that think that, oh, it's miserable. I, I hate it. It's, it's garbage. It's gross. And it always ends up being that way for them because they can, can't get above that train of thought. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Last question here. What is one question I should have asked that I did not? Um, hmm, one question you should have asked you didn't. I don't know. I was excited to talk to you, Spencer. And I, of course, I got <laughs> hey, I got to it quick. I had to get some, some questions put to you to understand sort of what's driving you and and fueling your your ambition. Um You know, I, I just think we've sort of talked about it, but it's got to be about the people coming through the door and, and but realistic expectations, right? Okay. Um, you know, um, there's just, you know, we're not going to be able to meet, I'm not going to be able to meet all the expectations that every person would have, but but try and begin where they're at and, and help people along their journey, right? You really sure. hear them, listen to them. Um, and and then just be honest if you think you can help them you think you have something to offer then great if if you don't think you can meet that expectation or what they're looking for then then help them on their way um, i love it that's just a, this is a great attribute for you and and also for your profession that's that speaks miles you know so i love that so perfect well derek i appreciate you coming on the show and if there's anyone out there that's listening to this episode and thinking, man, I think he could really help me in my life. What's the best way to reach out to your office and to, to get uh, on your schedule? You know, the, the website, so lifechangeassociates.net. Okay. And that's the website. And then from there, you'll just sort of, uh, you can make, um, you can start the process click on that patients tab and new patient and it's just a you know, maybe 15 minutes a little history some details um phone number email contact stuff uh submit that and then and then my office they're on it we'll be as soon as we get that we're trying to get get folks scheduled which means getting the insurance and all the you know requisite things within three days so we can get you get you scheduled okay guys you heard it and he is the man to see. So uh, take advantage of him and his expertise. And uh, he will he will definitely bring some peace to your life. So thank you again for coming on to the show. Thanks for letting me wrestle you and getting you on the show here. So, Well, Spencer, you made this. You were very kind to me. You made this invitation back in the beginning. And I thought, I, I don't want to you know, besmirch your record, right? I mean, and, if, and if you pan this episode, then we know that, hey, um, you were just being nice, but uh, it's been great. Congratulations oh, on this. Perfect. You've done how many episodes? 90, about 90 some odd, right? This is, I think this might be 90 or more or yeah, 90 or 91. This might be so. Well, I, I think it's great. 
you know, as far as my interaction with you, whatever you've touched, it, it, it's a good thing. So that's <laughs> appreciate it. And with your podcast and your business and everything you're doing, thank you for what you do for our community. This is fantastic. Perfect. I really appreciate that. And I hope we can get you on the show again here in the, in the near future as well. Well, yeah, if, if I, yeah, that's true. We could talk about, we could talk more about uh, options and treatment options, but that turns kind of clinical and it's not so much on the business side, but. Okay. There's always stuff to talk about when it comes to business for sure. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate Thank it. Thanks. All the, thanks a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. All of those that are listening, uh, make sure to, you know, download the, uh, the episode subscribe you know if you want to send me a nice review tell me how goofy my voice is whatever it is send a nice review there and uh, until next episode we'll see you guys all later congratulations on spending a couple minutes getting just a little bit smarter having some fun and supporting the pocatella business community if you are feeling the love make sure to subscribe rate and review on itunes Stitcher, or wherever you are.